Hello, my name is Attila Bakos, and as promised in my previous video, I will talk a bit about highlight recovery. This is going to be a rather technical video with some mathematics involved, so only watch this if you like this kind of stuff. This is an overexposed DNG from the latitude test I did with the XH2S in ProRes RAW in my previous video. As you can see on the RGB parade, the data is clipped. But if I enable highlight recovery, we get our highlights back. You can see it on the doll's face, as well as in these areas here. To understand how and why this works, let's take a look at how colors are stored in a RAW file. I created the demosaic linear image using DC RAW, but I skipped white balancing, so as you can see, Colors in RAW have a pretty strong green cast, because for design reasons the sensitivity of the red and blue channels are lower than that of the green channel. Green is prioritized to align with human perception. White balancing is basically compensating for the lack of sensitivity in the red and blue channels. When I shot this clip, the RGB parade on my Ninja V Plus showed clipping in all three channels, but in reality only the green channel was clipping. That's because the monitoring tools show you the results after the white balance multipliers are applied. We are going to apply them by hand now. If you're dealing with linear image data, multiplication or changing exposure is simply grabbing the right end of the curves and dragging it along the top or right edges. We need to modify the red and blue channels so that they align with the green one. Our reference will be the middle grey card in the background. It's this line here and we should push this line and this line to the same level. To do that we're gonna set Lumamix to zero because we want to handle each channel separately. First we raise the exposure of the red channel. Then we do the same with the blue. In the next node I'm gonna apply a color space transform plugin to have a Rec 709 gamma for better visibility. I will also use tone mapping to pull all highlight information back into the visible range because for red and blue we pushed it out during our manual white balancing. The level at which green is clipping is usually the level where the camera shows you that all three channels are clipping. But in RAW you have this data here in the red channel and this data here in the blue channel. Our highlights are now pink because of the missing green data but when you turn on highlight recovery, it will use data from the red and blue channels to recreate the missing values for the green channel. Highlight recovery always uses the channels where there is data, but most of the time it's the green channel that's clipping first in a RAW file, so if red and blue are not clipping, highlights can be restored very nicely. So far I've been talking about recreating highlight information that was missing. But there are situations when the camera shows clipping while in reality nothing is clipping at all. Now that you know that in the RAW files red and blue channels are stored with lower values than what the monitoring tools make you believe, you could rightfully ask the question, if I shoot let's say a red flower and the red channel shows clipping, is it really clipping? Or if I shoot a clear blue sky and the blue channel shows clipping, is it really clipping? To get to the answer we need to first understand how white balancing works. The camera stores white balance coefficients for each color channel in the metadata of the RAW file. Here are the coefficients from the XH2S for a few of the built-in white balance presets. The coefficients for the actual white balance that you used will be written to the metadata of the RAW file. To extract it I usually use EXIF tool from exiftool.org. But anyway, let's say you use the daylight preset. As you can see, red has the value 545, green is 302 and blue is 591. It's not the actual numbers that matter, but their ratio. When white balancing, green is generally left as it is, so its multiplier should be 1. To make green's multiplier 1 while keeping the ratio of the numbers, we divide all three numbers by 302. This way the multiplier for R, G and B will be 1.8046, 1 and 1.9569. 
Multiplying the linear values by the powers of 2 will raise the exposure by the exponent. So if we multiply by 2 to the power of 1, we raise the exposure by one stop. If we multiply by 2 to the power of 2, we raise the exposure by two stops. And if we multiply by 2 to the power of 3, we raise the exposure by three stops and so on. Knowing this, we can calculate the exact number of stops by which the red and blue channels will be raised when applying the daylight white balance. For red, it's base 2 log of 1.8046, that is 0.85 EV. For blue, it's base 2 log of 1.9569, which is 0.95 EV. This means that when you shoot a red flower with daylight white balance and you see the red channel touching the clipping point, it's 0.85 EV below clipping. And when you shoot the blue sky and you see the blue channel touching the clipping point, it's 0.97, so basically one stop below clipping. So you can use this information to expose even more to the right, but be careful not to clip the green channel while doing so. If the green channel is clipping on the RGB parade, it's usually clipping in the RAW file as well. You also have to remember to turn on Highlight Recovery in the RAW tab. Even when you know that your RAW file is not really clipping, you will only see all the data you captured when you click Highlight Recovery if the RGB parade showed clipping. Now you might say this is great and all, but it's nonsense that I have to remember the different red and blue exposure values for all the possible white balance settings that I might use. Even if I stick to daylight white balance and adjust to the correct white balance in post, I have to remember two values and adjust exposure accordingly. And you would be right, this would be a pain, but there is a solution called unitary VB or UniVB. It's a white balance preset where all the coefficients are equal or close to equal. This means that the white balance multipliers will be 1 for each channel or close to 1. Therefore, the RGB parade would actually show you what's inside the RAW file and you will always know what's really clipping. The only downside you would have to get used to is a very green image because we basically cancel out white balancing. So, if you're interested in UniVB, keep watching. I'm gonna show you how to create a custom UniVB preset for the Fujifilm X-H2S, but the same logic applies to other cameras as well. You will need your camera, a tripod and a monitor. On your PC or Mac, you will need something that can extract EXIF information from a RAW file, for that I'm going to use EXIF tool. You will also need an application to create colored backgrounds, I'm going to use Photoshop. Ideally, you should do this when it's dark and your only light source should be the monitor. Open a new document, it should be in RGB color mode, 8-bit is fine. Set foreground color to a darker gray, let's set it for RGB 100, 100, 100. Then fill the background with this color. Put your camera on a tripod, point your camera to the monitor and make sure this image fills a good amount of the frame. Set up a manual exposure for the grey color, expose about one stop under because later we will brighten this image. And white balancing might not work when the image becomes too bright. Use a slow shutter speed to remove screen flicker. Slightly move focus away from the monitor to hide those artifacts. Set up a custom white balance using this frame into one of your custom VB slots. When all is set, take the shot. Leave your camera in the same position, don't change the settings either, just copy the file to your computer. Now we're going to use EXIF tool to see the white balance coefficients for your custom white balance. Here we have the VB coefficients for green, red and blue in this order. Let's calculate the multipliers by dividing red by green and blue by green. In our case, it's 604 divided by 302, which is 2 for red, and 531 divided by 302, which is 1.7582 for green. Let's multiply the red and blue values in our Photoshop image by these numbers. For red, it's 100 times 2, which is 200. 
For blue it's 100 times 1.7582, which is 175.82, but always round to the nearest integer, so it's 176 in our case. Now set these values as foreground color and fill the entire image. At this point you should see a magenta color. Now you should apply custom VB on your camera into the same slot using this image and take a picture like before. Then we check the white balance coefficients of the new raw file with EXIF tool and we can see that the numbers are getting closer. This is great, this is what we want. Let's calculate the new values for our Photoshop background. For red it's 336 divided by 302 times 200, which is 223. For blue it's 348 divided by 302 times 176, which is 203. With these settings we are at the following levels. After 15 minutes and 10 images, this is the final result. This is an extremely good UniVB result, the numbers don't have to match. If you are within 5% that's already usable. If you use this white balance, the image will be green, but the RGB parade will tell you how the data is stored in the RAW file, you don't have to guess what's clipping and what's not. Let's see how that works by going back to our questions about shooting a red flower or a clear blue sky. Here we have a bunch of tulips. I'm shooting ProRes RAW using the XH2S and on the right you can see the RGB parade on the Ninja V+. We are in auto white balance mode and the red channel is just below clipping. When I raise exposure by one stop the red channel is clearly clipping. Now I switch to the newly created UniVB preset and as you can see it's not clipping. In this example the blue channel is just below clipping and then I will raise exposure by one stop. In auto white balance mode it's clearly clipping but with the UniVB preset you can see that it's still not clipping. If you don't want to see a green image and you have time to set up your shot, you can use this white balance preset to set up exposure, then switch to the desired white balance and ignore the clipping warnings. This way you don't even have to correct for the green cast in post, just don't forget to switch on highlight recovery. Ok, I know this was a lot, but I hope this video was informative to you and it was worth your time. If you managed to stay with me until the end, thanks a lot for your attention and I will see you in my next video.